Welcome to the Course Creators Circle podcast, where we talk all things course creation with your host, ideas strategist, and Thinkific approved expert, Linda Reed Enever. The Course Creators Circle podcast is home to Linda's top tips, along with interviews with experts and course creators just like you. Get ready for practical tips you can implement in your course creation journey with your host, Linda Reed Enavar. Hello, we are being joined by Lucas, one of my fellow Thinkific experts. We want to come in and talk marketing and all things course creation and marketing today with Lucas and making sure that you get a good sales strategy together. So Lucas, we've been Thinkific experts for a while. We've done a number of summits. We've done a number of expertise together. Would you like to introduce yourself to everyone, let them know what you do now and what we're going to talk about today? Sure. Yes. I'm a serial entrepreneur in the course creator space, a fellow Thinkific expert, like Linda said. And my main role, I I guess you could say, is helping other nonfiction authors convert their books to courses. Most of those nonfiction authors are coaches and consultants. I was a coach and a consultant, still am a coach and a consultant for years, and just found it fascinating to work with all these different professionals from all these different industries and help them all get to the same place. That A lot of times they would walk in the door with a book and they would say, hey, I'm trying to build a course. And I'd say, did you publish a book on the same topic? And they'd say, yes. And I'm like, give me that. <laughs> it's like, it's the framework. You've been, <laughs> yeah, you've been through this amazing process to write this book. And I understood that because I'm also a writer and I understood the process they went through to produce the book. And it's so parallel to the course creation process. Obviously, it's a little different. The criteria for building curriculum is different than the criteria for building a book. And yes, for those people that are curious, which one's more rigorous? You actually have to have a little bit more focus on objectives and outcomes in a course than you do in a book. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So one of my favorite things to do is help people with their course marketing strategies. When I first started my first training business, East Partnership was mainly an engineering company. We dealt a lot with figuring out how to market in a space that had a lot of pessimistic buyers engineers, industrial companies, they're just not very willing to part with money for training for certain types of things. And they didn't value a lot of the engineering, which was mind blowing to me. So I learned the hard way, the difference between B2B strategies and B2C strategies and how to make those work for consultants and all the good stuff. And they do. There's such a big difference inside those playing fields. So that is a huge one. So once again, Lucas is one of my fellow Thinkific experts. I really do respect him. So I'm going to hand back over and let him continue the conversation. So if you guys already know B2B and B2C, I apologize. But for those that do not know the difference, B2C is business to consumer and B2B is business to business. I spent the first, this is embarrassing to admit, but I'm happy to admit it. I spent the first eight months as a course owner and seller, owner of a training business with multiple partners as instructors, selling my courses to the wrong person, right? Eight months before we realized we were fully marketing B2C, but should have been marketing B2B. And I'll explain a little bit of why it took us so long to come to that realization and how we made all the right decisions, but missed that one. So we developed training for engineers that solved specific types of problems And so we did every other good curriculum developer should. We designed the curriculum around the learner, the person who's learning. And then we thought, we'll sell the course to them. It took us a while to realize the the learner, the engineer who was buying that (laughs) course, we were asking them to spend hundreds of their own dollars out of their own wallet to solve their boss's problem, which is crazy. And it just dawned on me one day, we're asking these people to pay their own money to solve their boss's problem. We're marketing to the wrong person. We were marketing to the learner. We should have been marketing to their organization they work for. And the minute we realized that and switched to a B2C, to a B2B and B2C model, we we took on both, everything changed. We tripled, quadrupled our monthly revenue by shifting our marketing model, which is crazy. Like why it took me that long to realize that, I don't know. (laughs) It happens to lots of people though. Like I've seen that happen quite regularly and uh, apologies guys, but we've had lots of sessions where I've had course creators come to me and go, my course isn't selling. And that mm. number one area is, okay, the learner is one thing, but the person who's going to pay for that course is another. And that yeah. also includes, we've got to look then look at what is our delivery best way of selling that course component. Mm-hmm. And Lucas and I've both been through it. 
You're like, yeah. I'm wrong target market. What we had to do is tailor our B2C strategy so that we weren't like direct calling companies because they just weren't going to respond to that with these types of courses. They were too deep in engineering to be like, whoever's answering the phone at a company, like they have no clue what we're talking about. So we realized <laughs> very quickly that the best way to sell them was for the consultants that were working with these companies to wow them over with their brilliance and yeah. impress them with their knowledge and then say, oh, by the way, we can train all of your people how to do this. So sometimes you just have to be present and you have to be there in another capacity or in a similar capacity and then show them the value. And then we couldn't sign them up fast enough. We had people requesting 20 and 30 seats at a time. Yeah. And so we there we were struggling to sell five, 10 seats. And then all of a sudden we're getting orders for 20 to 30. Yes, you can. So someone just asked on Facebook, can you split test to find out whether B or C is best? You want to answer that one first? Where Lucas was tapping on there is about educating your market. So quite often what I now am very much a B2C type situation because I'm teaching you what I do. But mm -hmm. I did used to work for a rather large recruitment brand and we used to be that B2B model where we had to go and educate our market, educate what you do well, run the seminars, run the workshops, run the consulting, and then share what you're going to be. Mm -hmm. Is there a B2C or a B2B component to what you're doing? Quite often there's a market for both. It's also then turns out which ones do you want to teach? Yeah, I completely agree with you. And I think that what the worst thing you can do is not make a decision at the start. You yep. need to look at who you're truly trying to serve and who's going to stroke the check. To me, it was about like, I could still serve the ideal learner. I just had to go to someone who had the decision authority over the budget. And that was like the big difference. And it was hard to get there because the last thing I wanted to do was be a salesman. So to me, the B2C market is like an opportunity for bulk sales. When you get to that point with a classroom or multiple classrooms, you're dealing with several layers to get to the point of sale. However, one of the big things in that space is the blogging, the free resources, the valuable resources, because I think it's really important, Lucas, we can touch on this. Give away your stuff. You don't have to give away everything, but give away enough. But sometimes you need guidance to understand <laughs> what we've given you. Yeah, And that's where your courses and that sort of stuff come into play. And it does help you screen your audience a bit too. Certain communities respond to free content differently than others. And I'm a big fan of posting free content. I actually have a Learn Thinkific course and program where it's a lot of live Q&A, but I put a lot of the lessons just up for free on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, just to help people because those people that are going to YouTube for the free video content, they're not the same people that are investing in my program. And there were a lot of people that were saying, why would you put your content on YouTube? That's some of your curriculum. I'm like, dude, there's over 60 videos in that class. If I put 15 or 20 of them up, yeah. one, it's not the whole class. Two, they're not getting any live Q&A, right? There's a lot of value that can be added to the program outside of that curriculum that's being posted and offered for free. And the people that are going there for free, I'm glad to help them. Because nine times out of 10, they're actually not the person who's going to end up in my program anyways. It doesn't matter. It's sure. And then when I was in engineering, I offered a lot of free content to people because what I found was most of the people that came to my free content, this drove, by the way, this drives a lot of course creators nuts. Linda, you'll crack up at this. Tons of free, like people coming through this free yeah. lead magnet. Tons. And all my friends are like, oh my gosh, you must be selling a fortune. I'm like, no, they never convert to sales, but that's not the point. The people that were coming to that free resource don't have other resources. Yeah. They're working in like a coal mine in Western Africa. They don't have money. They don't have education sources at the tip of their finger. This is like everything to them. I was happy to help those people. And we can get into this scarcity mindset when it comes to marketing our courses. Yeah. And I think if anyone else is stuck with their course marketing, let's have a chat. But I think, Lucas, it's a really good one to talk about yeah. is, but that's in my course. I shouldn't give it out there. Or that I've got that out on YouTube. I shouldn't give it out there. Last week, I had a conversion of over $2,000 from a YouTube video that was just literally someone going, I have taken your free stuff. I've taken your free stuff. I just need the conversation. And I'll say this to you really honestly. She didn't even do the discovery call. She just went straight for the purchase. Straight in, straight for the purchase. And I'm going, where the hell did this person come from? And I'm like, oh, I remember there was a subscriber update to my YouTube channel the other week. And it was about that process. And it's just about understanding that sometimes the content's going to lead to someone. Other times it's going to fix the tire kickers. The other times that there have been people that have never bought from me, but they have tagged myself inside the Thinkific group and they go, hey, Linda's really good at this. She's got these videos out there and she helps us throughout that space. And that's fine. 
But yep. also bearing in mind, and I think we're going to tap on, touch on this one, building an audience takes a little bit of time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And you need to give yourself some grace while you do it because it's a it's a battle. It's an exercise in patience. <laughs> Quickest way to build an audience is to teach them stuff. Yeah. Make yourself attractive to them. My business mentor, Honoré Quarter, she says something brilliant when I first met her and I was like, oh, I love that. She said, you want to be an attractor, not a recruiter. Yeah. And here I am looking at this very successful entrepreneur with multiple streams of income and all the book sales and all the course sales, six figure course business. And that's not even her primary business. And I'm just like this. She literally built her foundation on being an attractor, not a recruiter. And there's a, a lot of power in that. It changes the way you communicate to people. It changes how much you're willing to share. And it takes you out of this selling mindset that people hate being in. And it changes the way you act when you're like, feel like you're forcing sell. It's like, it takes the ick away. Yeah. How many sales coaches out there right now are saying, let me teach you how to sell without being icky or like <laughs> guilty. There's a reason they can say that. When you look at the, the problem agitation solution pass, like the pass that we use yeah. in copy, a lot in copywriting for defining people's problems and then agitating that problem, showing them how it negatively impacts their life and then showing them how nice things are when they have the solution in place the outcome, then what ends up happening is you don't have to be a yucky salesman. You're just telling them like, hey, this is something that could potentially help you. And that's what I'm trying to do is help you. The money just happens. It happens. And we're not saying this to the point of view of guys to be completely wanky about this either, though. We are saying that it, it takes work. Marketing your course is going to take work. But the strongest thing I can say to you is build your audience, teach for your audience. Do all of those. Give you the time. Have the conversation with people. I filtered someone out of my world today because I'd offered them a discovery call and they're like, oh, I don't want to wait. And I'm like, that's fine. However, I'm not going to go and create a, a brand new tutorial for you right now just because you want it today. However, there was someone else that I helped this morning in the early hours this morning because my brain was working that I helped this morning that I said, oh, yeah, we're about to run a session on automation. Here's the link. So it's about filtering those people through as you build your audience and going through those areas and bearing in mind, and I say this as patiently as I possibly can, not everyone's your audience and you don't need to own them. You don't need to own everyone in an audience. They'll come to you when they're ready and quite often they are not ready when they first join your cycle, when they first join the following, but as they grow over time, they become ready. Absolutely. I love that. Love it. Everything in course creation is about delivering a win for your potential student and then delivering small wins along the way. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Lucas, where can everyone find you? Yeah. If you want to learn more about me and what I'm doing, come on over to www.marinotraining.com. Marino is M-A-R-I training.com. And I'd love to just have you on the newsletter. I put out stuff. It's fun. I don't spam people. So I hate spam email. It's a rule. Do you and I and have a bit of a chat. And yes. then you need to talk book marketing. And I also need to talk to your partner later. <laughs> Clive's got a client that we need to talk about. Okay, cool. Well done. Thank you for listening to the Course Creators Circle podcast. Don't forget to check out the full range of resources available for course creators at www.thecoursecreatorscircle.com.au.